Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another segment of Hollywood Memories. I'm Dan Roberts, the publisher of The Vegas Voice, and my great job is to co-host with my favorite columnist, <laughs> Beverly Washburn. You always say that's so cute, Dan. Thank you. Thank you for having me once again, and thanks to all of you for watching. And um, for those of you who read my column, and thank you for that, uh, you know that each month I write about my experiences of, of growing up in Hollywood as a child actress. Now doing this little segment is especially fun for me because I get to have, at certain times, a special guest. And today my very special guest is a little girl who was probably the cutest, best little actress uh, you've seen her a million times, and we're going to talk about her career as well as her book. We, we didn't grow up together because I was a teenager when she was a little girl. And so we didn't see each other for a long time, but we both knew of each other. And it's only by coincidence that recently we became reunited and we've grown to be the best of friends. I adore her. She is the sweetest. I, I love her to pieces and she's got so many stories we don't even have enough time to go there. We don't. And her name is? Her name is, <laughs> and my very special guest today, who I love, who? Mimi, Mimi Gibson. Thank uh, you for being here, Mimi. Thank you for having me, both uh, of you. Mimi, thank you. You know what? I. We talked beforehand, and I have a, a ton of questions for you and, and, again, for Beverly. And I find it so interesting that, like Beverly, you started as a very young child model. How did you even get into that? My mom, my dad died. My mom uh, brought my sister and me down to Los Angeles. Uh, I had one beautiful baby contest, oh, yeah. God. Anyway, uh, she took me around to photographers. And what was uh, quite good about me for those times uh, was that I liked every animal I saw. A lot of kids are afraid of animals. Really? Okay. Yeah. And I liked everything. You'd stick a chickie in my hands and puppy, a kitty, you know, whatever, and I was in love. Mm -hmm. And so um, at the time, calendars were given as presents to different customers from all these businesses, and a lot of the photos were kids and animals. So I was the number one calendar girl in the United States for six years. And that was from what age to what age? It's like from, you know, a year and a half until probably seven. And, and you did modeling like that. Beverly, you did yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Did, yeah. did you enjoy it or was it a job? I mean, was it fun? Did you like playing with the animals at least? I did. I loved it. But the heartbreaking thing was I couldn't bring any of them home. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and, and then from there, you just naturally went into movies? How did that even come about? Oh, my sister was taking a singing lesson, and Hazel McMillan was an agent. And she had a daughter, um, Gloria McMillan, who was on the Our Miss Brooks show. Mm -hmm. She played um, Eve Arden's niece. And um, she was taking singing lessons also. And Hazel and she walked in, and Hazel saw me coloring on the floor and said to my mom, would you like to put her in the movies? And my mom said, yeah. And so two days later, I had Corky of Gasoline Alley. Really? Yeah. It was, it, as simple as that. It wasn't yeah. a, okay, and again, for you, Beverly, you had you had to lie, cheat, and steal and get Jack Mahoney to, in <laughs> effect, know, you, make up a story. You, you and, never and know worked. how you're going to get into this business. Yeah. But um, I, I just have to throw this in because she won't say it, but I have to say She was one of the best child actresses ever and also the cutest. She was on the cover of every calendar, on mugs, everywhere. And she was as cute, if not cuter, than Shirley Temple. I hope you have some pictures of her as a model because... We'll, we'll get them, yeah. Uh, uh, just adorable. You know, I, what I get a kick out of is that I tell people, listen, I'm going to have a calendar girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they say, what age? I say, well, from two to six. And, and they look at me. But to go from being a model to a 
a movie star or a movie actress to do stuff, it wasn't a big deal for you. Were, were you ever nervous getting in front of the cameras? No. I enjoyed, uh, and I realized as I got older, I enjoyed doing a job well. And it, it was good work. Yeah. It was, but it was, you know, weird. You know, kids don't usually support their families. <laughs> and, but, but that's what you ended up doing. Yes. I mean, your, your folks depended on you. Well, my a, mom. It was my just mom, my mom, dad, my dad sister, and me. And uh, my dad had died, and my mom was a little loony from my dad dying. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe she was just a little loony. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and when you did, let's say, movies and, and, and TV, we're going to go into it, what did you enjoy more? Was it the movie I, thing or was it the TV shows? Because you did 35 movies, over 150 TV shows. I mean, you were a pro's pro. Absolutely. Did, did you, was there a difference in, before the camera or with the cast and crew? Well, you know, as I've said before, I loved doing live TV. That okay. was my absolute favorite. And when I would hear, I did six Playhouse 90s right. and a couple of Climaxes. That was another live TV mm -hmm. show. Uh, but when I would hear the Playhouse 90 theme play, I swear the hair would stand up on the back of my neck. It was just, it was so exciting. And you knew you couldn't make a mistake and you knew that you had to know your lines, you had to know your place, and you couldn't stop the filming. It had to go. And it was thrilling. I was in the original Days of Wine and Roses on uh, Playhouse 90 with Cliff Robertson and Piper Laurie. And, you know, Piper Laurie was in the back throwing clothes off, putting clothes on, <laughs> everybody's running around, and it was thrilling. It was just thrilling. And you were about how old? I was probably seven or eight. Okay. And you're saying that it was thrilling, it was live. Yep. You didn't feel the pressure? I mean, you didn't, oh my God, I'm looking at the camera now, and if I blink or do something, you weren't terrified? Because I would have been terrified. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. No, Beverly says it was no big deal. Yeah. It was no big deal to well, you. Well, we either. were so young then. We didn't know any better, yeah. I guess. But. I, I, I enjoyed doing that. I really did. And um, it was just exciting because you knew you were doing a job well. Mm -hmm. And I, I always liked doing a job well. Oh, okay. Now let's switch over to the movies. You did a movie called Houseboat with Sophia Lauren and Cary Grant. And when I say that out loud, I say, oh my God, and Paul Peterson, let me throw him in. And that, how was it like working with them? I'm mean, talking about legends in Hollywood. Cary Grant, Sophia Lauren, was, did it phase you? Or? No, because <laughs> I was used to working with famous stars. It was just another job, mm -hmm. but it was a job that I looked forward to mostly because we were going to spend a month in Washington, D.C. And um, Mel Shavelson, the director, and uh, Jack Rose, the producer, they had worked together on a lot of uh, movies. I did I'll See You in My Dreams with them. Uh, that was the story of Gus Kahn with Doris Day and Danny Thomas, and I was little in that. And so they knew me, and uh, we went to Washington, D.C., and they were so kind to us, all of us kids. They gave us a chauffeur-driven limousine. The chauffeur's name, I'll never forget his name, his name was Sugar. And he showed us on the weekends when we weren't shooting everything you would want to see in Washington, D.C. Mm. And it was, that was wonderful. And, and working with Cary Grant, and were, they, were, they, were they nice to you? Did they treat you like an actress? Did they treat you like a little kid? Or they just patted you on the head and get out? Or what was it like? Well, Cary Grant, I don't think he really knew how to treat kids. And so he would lecture us. <laughs> yeah, okay. And he would say things to me like, 
don't get fat, don't feed your husband fattening food. And it was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> She's six. <laughs> and Sophia Loren? And Sophia Loren was adorable. She was funny, she was fun, she was sweet, and... And gorgeous. <laughs> and gorgeous, and gorgeous, and she'd say to the boys, pinch me. And the boys would, and mm. Paul would say to me, oh, pinch Sophia, <laughs> Mimi, she likes it. And yeah. I'd say, no thanks. <laughs> so it, the, the whole movie, that movie was just a, a fantastic time for you. It was. It was. It was. It was great. We were on the set for three months. Um, it's a great movie. It was also a great movie, but yeah. you enjoyed it also. Yeah. Okay. Well, but I enjoyed most of the movies I worked on. You did. Yeah, I enjoyed the work. The studio teachers were terrific. They right. were always good. Absolutely. And so that wasn't bad. I I have to tell you about the children's hour because that was. That was really interesting. I think we were on it about six weeks. It was William Wyler directing. He was, a, you know, a fabulous director, and he was a nice man. And it was with Audrey Hepburn and Shirley MacLaine. But the things that I remember most are the two sets that were on either side of us mm -hmm. and what went on. And we were in a sound stage going to school and up in the high space were uh, trapeze equipment. And Burt Lancaster would come, and he was still looking very good to this little girl. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> he would wear a baseball cap, doffed his cap, and say, Good morning, ladies, because it was a story about a girls' school. So we were all girls. We were all little girls, goinky little girls. And we'd all, good morning, and look at him. And then he'd start doing, because you know he was a trapeze artist mm -hmm. in his youth. He'd start do. it was like, <laughs> <laughs> and we were all in love. And then, you know, he'd spend his time doing that. And then he'd take his cap and say, Goodbye, ladies. <laughs> Goodbye. And and you go from Cary Grant, Burt Lancaster. Now let's jump over to TV. You also worked with Red Skelton. I did. I loved him. He was a doll. He was funny. He was sweet. He was everything good. He was everything adorable. good. Now yeah. again, you worked with him also. I did. He was okay. Adorable. Now wait. Which one of you hated him? No. Nobody could hate Red <laughs> Skelton. But I just have to, uh, because I, I know we don't want to run long because you say we're supposed to only do 10 minutes. I do want to mention I'm her gonna, book because oh. I really hope that you'll all buy her book because she has so many stories. We could sit here till, you know, doomsday. So I hope we can have her back because she's got a million stories. But I would love for all of you to buy her book because it's it's a wonderful book. And how do you go about getting the book? On Amazon. Like everything else along <laughs> with Beverly's book. I, again, we, we literally just touched the surface. Yeah. And Mimi, I like to have you back again if, oh, if, thank Beverly, you. if you know what and if Beverly <laughs> lets me come back oh. I would really enjoy it. <laughs> no, I, I love her. I, I, I would I love, love to have her. I love her more. You no, love her you more, don't. Huh? Yeah. Okay. I you more. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have, have you back. Hopefully you'll let me come back and do one well, of your yeah. segments. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we couldn't do it without you. <laughs> oh, thank you for nice. putting this together. It means so much. And for those of you who want to get more information about Beverly or Mimi and you want us to uh, have more of these videos, please, please, please hit the subscribe button on YouTube so we can get all this going. And Mimi, I thank you so much again for being here. Beverly, as always, my thank favorite you. columnist. Oh, thank you. And Dan. this is Dan Roberts for Hollywood Memory saying we will see you again next time. Bye. Thank you.